All right, so I am coloring a little bit with Duotone now. This is called Hard Edge Duotone. It's cutting out just the, uh, just the highlights from my shadow layer, which I made using adjustments and levels. And you can, you can really get into this and see what happens. I can put like a little glint on the tongue and on the teeth, though that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Right? You can just do lots of things. What's nice about this method of doing it is you don't need to be so exact. You know, it's just catching light where you think it should. And then the colors are already kind of in harmony with each other because you just use direct adjustments to make them, right? So now I'm just going to do a little bit more with this hard edge, and then I'm going to show you the other options, right? Because you can make this sandwich more and more complicated. So now instead of just a cheese sandwich of flat color, now I've added like some, some lettuce to it, right? So I have cheese and lettuce. Now what if I duplicate my flat color again? I duplicate it and I call it duotone. And this is going to be my highlights. Because usually your flat color isn't the same as one of your duotone colors. Your duotone takes your flat color and pushes it both lighter and darker. So if it's Charlie Brown's shirt in flat color, it's yellow. It's a local color of yellow. But then in duotone, it would be a lighter yellow for the highlights and a darker yellow for the shadows, right? And that way you can show like a bus about to run down Charlie Brown and the, and the headlights of the bus shining on his shirt, right? Yep. So, so what I'm going to do is call this copy of my flat color duotone highlights, and I'm also going to do this hard edge. And I'm going to do it the exact same way I did the shadows. I'm going to go to Image Adjustments, Levels. And instead of making them darker, like I did for the shadows, I'm going to make it brighter for the highlights, right? And now I use my lasso, and I can take away where I think the shadows should be. So maybe like in the brow, maybe underneath the teeth. And in the mouth, I'm going to do this very loosely so you get the idea. Maybe uh, underneath the arm and the paws, this is where shadows would be. Ooh, big looping cuts. Right. Now, you can definitely overdo this. And remember, color is not supposed to save anything. It's just supposed to add to what you've already done. I'm selecting and then deleting. Yes. Because it's on a copy. And so it's, this is a good way to do duotones now as well. So now I have highlights and I have shadows. So if I wanted to, I could have all of them in between, right? There's some big ranges there that I could work with within each color. And then I can also play with opacity and find like the right balance for my duotone hard edge. Or in animation it's called cell shading. Okay, other options. <laughs> I can take, it's good to kind of simplify it for yourself, so let me just pick, put it all at 100%. What if I want to make it soft edged instead of hard edged? So I can just copy my hard edge layer. And Photoshop is very good at taking away focus, right? And then all I have to do is say filter Gaussian blur, blurry Gaussian blur, and I can soften that edge so it starts to gradate. And now we have this soft transition from lights to darks. And maybe you like that more. Now the only problem with that is when you do soft edge, you'll start to get pixels that bleed beyond your lines. But that is easy to clean up 
So I'm going to name this now my soft edge copy. It's easy to clean up because I just go to my line art and I select all the empty space around it, right? With contiguous. Get all these undercuts. This illustration is way complicated <laughs> to demonstrate. But I take all of those shapes. And then what do I do with them? This is all the kind of outside. You can see where the pixels are bleeding over a little bit. It's subtle, but it's there. But then I go to my soft edge, and then I just delete it, and it will sharpen it right up. All right, so this is before I deleted it. See the little haze everything has? Then when I delete it, it's all nice and sharp again. So if we look at it, this is now what's inside my sandwich. Pretty complicated. It's a combination of soft edge duotone, like soft edge duotone shadows, and flat color. And I can always just modify with adjustments. I can even just modify my flat colors all together. The important thing is once they're all filled in. Yeah, all these different tones. There's one last thing I can do, and I haven't done any of this particularly well or thoughtfully, but after duotone color comes full spectrum color. Full spectrum color means you can use the full spectrum in every local area, right? So if we take this student work again. We saw how it started with flat color. Then we saw a version of it with duotone. Now this is a version with full spectrum color. Because now the peach of his skin not only has lights and darks of peach, but it also has purple and pink. The oranges of his leotard not only has the light and dark oranges, it also has browns and reds. And you just have multiple colors everywhere. Here we have Wonder Woman again. This is subtle full spectrum, but still full spectrum. Because in the skin tones, you see yellow and you see pink together. So that's full spectrum. Same thing here. You have purple, pink, and yellow all for the skin tones. Full spectrum. Here we have full spectrum in a, in a kind of a traditional way of, of coloring, which is made to look with brushwork like watercolor. You have like oranges bleeding into yellows, bleeding into greens all in their own areas, right? So full spectrum is the one that looks the most painterly. Because it's so painterly, it starts to look weird to have line art on top of it. So generally with full spectrum, you'll really minimize the line art. You'll make it really thin, or you'll do a special effect, which we'll talk about next class, which is uh, changing the color of the line art. And that's called a color hold. So this is all the stuff in the sandwich. What we do next class is like putting toothpicks and olives on top of the, of the bread, right? Stuff that affects the line art. But you can see the full spectrum here, here, here. It's when you're mixing your colors within. So often, fuller color means thinner line art. And then we'll get into those special effects. So how can I introduce full spectrum to this? It sounds like it's really, really intimidating. It doesn't need to be. I can just duplicate my flat color yet again and then call this full spectrum. And then I can take all of that cheese layer, right? And what I can do with it is actually put a layer style on it of a gradient overlay. And the gradient I'm going to use is one that has a lot of colors to it, like maybe the pastels. And I'm going to take it from purple to pink, and maybe I'll add in a red and add in a green and add in a yellow. It's going to go nuts. So I have a pretty strong spectrum there. 
and I can add in more, maybe like a, a darker blue, the whole rainbow, right? Then what I can do is I can play with its angle, make it kind of angle towards the light. I can play with its scale. Maybe it looks about like that. Then I can say OK, and I can rasterize that layer style. So now this is my color on this layer. If I have nothing else, it would just look like this. And then with my line art, that's full spectrum. But this is what I think is cool. If we use that to modify the things we've already done, right? And so I'm going to use that by setting it to a different mode, a different blending mode, like darken. And notice how now it kind of blends in with all of my shadows already existing. And now I have full spectrum where I have not just pink and yellow, but orange and red and blue and purple in my shadows. Or I can try multiply, or I can try overlay, right? Or soft light or pin light. So pin light's pretty strong. And then I can play with the opacity of it. And that is a subtle way to do full spectrum. In a way that helps everything kind of blend together. So these are all of our different coloring options that are within the sandwich. Linear light looks pretty nice. So this is it without it. This is it with it. So it just kind of tones everything. And you'll see subtly it's full spectrum. All right. So I have more to color. I know we all have more to color. So we're going to continue that beginning of next class. And then we're going to learn how to finish this off and then add type to it for our next assignment. Make sure you save your work. And I'll see you on Monday. Whew.